Hello guys, welcome back. Denzel Rodriguez here, your finance geek of the 21st century. Coming to you in this video, talking about your Velocity Banking questions that you submit on my website on the Contact Me page. Every now and then, some of you go into really good detail and provide some really good questions, which gives me content to create so that I can uh, bring more value to you on a weekly basis. If you're here for the first time, welcome. On this channel, we cover velocity banking, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. The primary goal is for you to build a kingdom that will last forever in your household, become financially free, live the lifestyle that you want to live, okay? In the name of Jesus Christ, we all said amen, amen. Great. So, first question that I have here is from Shakila Chernoff. I think I said that right. I am looking for ways, ways, ways to pay off my mortgage. 29 years left on it. Okay, so she's at the beginning, guys. She wants to pay it off potentially using a first position HELOC. Parentheses, not sure if this is different from velocity banking. No, it is not. It is a way, as you said, it is a way to do velocity banking. We could do velocity banking with a first position HELOC or a second position HELOC. A first position just simply means that you're going to replace that mortgage, that 29 year mortgage, you're gonna replace it with a 20 year, more than likely, uh, first position HELOC. So that means the first mortgage gets paid off. Now you have a first position HELOC which you can use like a checking account. There are some pros and cons to this. You need to learn what those pros and cons are. There are some very helpful videos on YouTube talking about first position HELOCs, second position HELOC. The way I personally take what to do, which one to go with, because they're both solid tools that we can use for sure. The way I look at it is the way that that HELOC is originally going to be set up, okay? So we need to make sure that it follows all the criteria that we want. What's the criteria? Well, in a HELOC, we want a home equity line of credit, not a home equity loan. That's the first part. So you want a home equity line of credit. We need it to be revolving. We need it to have a term about at least 10 years I would say what that means is that HELOC will remain a home equity line of credit for about 10 years at the 10 year mark it will turn into a home equity loan so whatever you owe in year 10 if you don't pay it off by year 10 it'll turn into a home equity loan which the interest will be calculated amortized as opposed to simple interest being the revolving line. So you need to be revolving. We want a decent term period, right? Because we, we need that period so we can get out of debt during that time. We need it to be simple interest or in other words, calculated daily interest. We want the option to have principal and interest payment together okay we don't want just an interest only payment on a HELOC we would prefer to have a principal and interest payment why having an interest only HELOC pretty much means that when you make the payment all that money in the first 10 years or so is just going towards interest. So you're not actually paying down the debt. That would be a strategy for a different video using a HELOC and having it uh, interest only payments. Because if you have an, a HELOC for interest only payments, that payment is gonna be significantly smaller. And if you have the proper strategy as to why you would do such a thing, usually that's in the real estate investing world, right? Where you can use a HELOC to acquire a piece of property or units or whatever, and it's going to cash flow and all you have to pay 
is the interest only payment. So you don't really care about paying the property down itself. You don't care about paying it off because your exit strategy is to pretty much maybe refi and sell or cash out or cash out refinance, I think is a strategy, or you're gonna get rid of it at that 10 year mark. Or maybe you renegotiate the whole entire thing because there would be equity built up in the property over that time period. So even with all the interest that you're paying, you would be cash flow positive the difference via the rents that you're collecting. So that is a different strategy. If you and I don't know that strategy and we're simply at the stages of Denzel, I just want to pay off my debt. I just want to be debt free from my credit cards, my loans, my car payments, the house itself. Typically, because of the type of person I'm working with, you probably most likely do not have that knowledge in terms of investing and making money and doubling down and tripling in 10x. Okay? I think that's a fair statement to make. Most people don't have that knowledge. So, where Velocity Banking comes in is this helps you create a practical strategy to become debt free in about five to seven years as opposed to the debt snowball or debt avalanche method where it would take maybe 10 to 13, 15 years or longer to pay off debt. In addition to that time advantage, we also learn that information out there in the world. How to leverage capital, how to leverage debt to our advantage. So with that being said, going back to whether I want a first position HELOC or a second position HELOC, I think it's going to depend on these numbers right here. Your four major numbers. I believe that if you are making, I'd say 10,000 plus a month, maybe the first position might be cool. I think it would work and you have like at least a thousand or more in cash flow. I think that would be ideal to go that route. Now, what would make me say no, even if you do have more than 10,000 in income and a thousand plus in cash flow per month, is the types of debts that you have, right? So Shaquilla says that she has the mortgage debt. She has, let me see, she's got some credit cards. Okay, let me read the rest of her question. You know, I'm gonna reread re it. I am looking for ways to pay off my mortgage, 29 years with a first position HELOC. Uh, not sure if this is different from velocity banking in say seven years or less. Outstanding mortgage balance is two hundred and three thousand. I'm gonna write that two hundred and three thousand. Uh, uh, estimated house value two hundred thirty thousand. So I don't know if I can get a first position HELOC right away. I'm not too sure. Monthly cash flow. She wrote monthly cash inflow she wrote is 3200 so if she's bringing in only 3200 a month i think first position he locks out the door i wouldn't even look at it because of the way you're, you're, you're simply moving one whole big debt to another think of it that way that if you're looking at a first position heloc you're replacing your primary mortgage with a heloc if you only make three, four, five, six grand a month, right? It may not be the best strategy because the effectiveness of that three, four, five K going in and out of that checking account, is, mm, I don't think it's gonna be too pretty, especially if you have credit cards, a car, student loan, this and that and the other thing. I would rather get a second position HELOC to pay off those smaller debts first, knock all those out, and then once I'm just left with the mortgage, we use the second position HELOC to start chunking at the primary mortgage, create a bunch of equity, and then maybe after a year or two in, when I know the concept, I'm really good, I know my numbers, everything's solid, then we take the whole thing, turn into a first position HELOC, and then technically your debt is done, now you're just doing velocity banking on the HELOC itself. 
So I don't want to put myself in a first position HELOC if I have so many other debts to worry about. Because you're doing velocity banking on this big old first position HELOC that you're not going to pay off anytime soon. It's going to take a couple of years. Meanwhile, you got the car, the student loan, this and the other thing that are eating you up in interest. So you're paying a bunch of interest on that HELOC and you're paying a bunch of interest on all the other debts. I think it would be better if we tackle the smaller things first, get you aligned with your four major numbers, get that cash flow up high, get the credit score up even higher, and I might be able to get a better rate over the long haul, right? And when we do the math, we can lay this out and we can, you know, we can see, okay, does this really make sense? Our mortgage is 1600 bucks. Out of that, 450 goes into escrow for taxes, insurance, and the PMIO. Uh, lifestyle expenses, thousand bucks. Minimum payments for two credit cards with balance 47 and 46 are included in this expense. Do you think it'll work? To my, you know, surf, looking at it from a surface level, no. I don't prefer first position. I think you're better off getting a second position HELOC or even a personal line of credit. Let's knock out those credit cards and if you have any other debts that you have. My local bank is ready to give me a HELOC. Just depends on what type of HELOC. First, second, what is it? Um, you know what? In your situation, if all you have is the two credit cards and the bank is, is willing to uh, give you this first position HELOC on a, on a $200,000 property and they throw in the other credit cards with it, if you have a, no other financial plans or, or your, your sole focus is just pay off the house. We could look at this from a math perspective. We can just simply look at the amortization schedule of what you currently have on that $203,000 debt, what you're currently paying per month in interest, and we can compare it to what the first position HELOC interest rate would be, right? So we look at that and we map it out and we see who pays more interest. If your $203,000 mortgage is at a 5% rate and you can get a 3.75% a simple interest first position HELOC, yes, that would make sense to go ahead and do that even with a low payment. So you see the, you see the, uh, the confusion that this can create, right? And it's, and it's tough to know which, which way to go. So it's nice to work with someone, hello, your finance geek, to help you along the way and we make sense of it. So while we're talking, we're having our conversation, we're, we're walking through this. I'm looking at everything. Okay, does this align with your financial goals or not? What is the purpose of me going from the first position more, uh, the first mortgage to a first position HELOC or a second position. What, what is the ultimate plan? What am I looking to do? What am I looking to get out of all this? Okay. She says, um, yeah, my local bank is ready to give me a HELOC. Your one-on-one -on -one looks expensive, especially up front. I would like to see a spreadsheet that shows the monthly transactions that need to happen and ensure ensure, whoa, she's going life insurance on me, that the payoff time is seven years or less. What do you say? Thank you, quotation mark. Okay, so we have an objection on pricing, right? The one-on-one, the, the one -on -one, 1497. So she said this is expensive, okay? So that actually makes me believe that this is what her income is, the 3,200, and she's got the 1,600 mortgage, um, payment and then 450 of that is going towards the escrow. I didn't I just want to write that taxes, PMI. So we have a price objection here. Well, I would simply say, hey, you know, um, let's do some math here. Let's let's determine what her cash flow is based on what she wrote 3200 minus 1600 minus a thousand in lifetime lifestyle expenses um that leaves me with 
600 but then she's got those two credit cards payments so i'm gonna you know create a buffer and i'm gonna say she's about maybe her cash flow is in the neighborhood of like two to four hundred dollars so i would see why yes that looks expensive right to pay some 24 year old kid for uh one-on-one -on -one coaching i get it i get it i have other options okay you can do four can you do 14.99 a month and learn velocity banking on your own, right? And and spend time with me and invest time with me on my platform, watch all my videos. You'd be surprised what I do for certain people if you are heavily committed to your finances. So, if you show some skin in the game, right? We get this thing rolling, right? I think I think personally, you need to get your income up. That's what I would say. Personally, if you've never spent money on financial education, this is going to be hard for you to do. And I get that, which is why I create content like this. If you invest time on my channel, I promise you, you will learn the concept for yourself, okay? When you get to this stage, this is a different way of being, right? People who invest in financial education I don't know what the stat is out there, but I'm just going to use me personally. From the day I started investing in my personal life to create what you see today, right? I spent as much as I possibly could in financial education because that is the single most important tool that you need to have in this country, in the United States, in order to become successful financially. I'm not talking spiritually. I'm not talking physically, mentally, uh, uh, perspective, ideology. I'm, I'm looking at this logically. Logically speaking, the only tool that you need is the moolah because the moolah will get you access to education that would normally not be available to you. Okay, So that is going to be my you know, uh, comeback, so to speak, is you need to change your way of being first. You need to get your income up, okay, $3,200, that's too small. Personally, me, me personally, if I'm making $3,200, I've got no business owning a property, but that's not, me for, that's not for me to say, okay? So my suggestion is I think you need a 10X. I think you need a 10X first, okay? I like that idea, all right? Because cutting back, I don't know how much you wanna cut back. You know, honestly, I look at numbers all day long and you know, you can listen to Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman on cutting back and going on rice and beans. I really don't know how much that's going to do for you. Okay. Uh, yes, there's some positives to it, but I look at that state as a temporary place to be. You want to go there temporarily. Yes. Cut back on expenses, sell things, get rid of things that you don't want that are holding you back, that are delaying you. Yeah. Do all that. But also think big, like, how do I go from 3,200 a month to 32,000? It's just another zero. It's just another zero, right? How do I go from 32 to 32,000 a month? Because once I go from 32 to 32,000 a month, well, 1497 don't seem so expensive. So it's just a matter of perspective. When you see things, oh, that's expensive. That's, oh my God. Oh my God, Denzel, 1497, so expensive, right? But if you were to look in the industry, I'm actually, like on average, 75% less than every other Velocity Banking coach expert out there. Why? Well, my age does play a factor. I've only been in the game for so long, right? And the other thing is my preference. I just prefer to charge that, okay? That's what my current value is. So with that being said, Miss Shaquilla, I really suggest take these initial steps first. If you're not ready to invest in education, don't. That's what all the free content is for, for you to change your lifestyle, change your way of being, you know, think of ways to create more money so that you can afford things like financial education. Because once you start putting money into that type of investment, personal development, ah, uh, ah, uh, you're gonna be standing up straight, you're gonna look taller, you're gonna feel better, you're just gonna produce more. And, be, and you're going to be in an abundant state of mind, okay? Very, very important. So I hope that helps, Shaquilla. Hope that helps for everyone else that's watching. 
hey, here's a scenario. Are you in this situation? Are you, are you like, man, you know, money's not good, money's tight, got a bunch of debt, I wanna be debt free. What do I do? Start watching videos, start investing time. That's the starting point. Start committing to a new way of being, new perspective. It's a new year, it's 2020, it's a new decade. Time to wake up, people. Because if you're 40, if you're 50, if you're 60, if you're 70, you need to wake up if you have a lot of debt. Because you are just, you're going backwards instead of forward. And we need, we need to look forward, especially for your children. You don't want them to copy your footsteps, right? Some of them, not just not your financial ones, okay? The other ones, yeah. But your financial ones, you want to tell your kids, hey, uh, don't do this. Take a look at this concept. Take a look at this. Expand. Think for yourself. Don't just, you know, fall into a trap. Think for yourself. Run the numbers. That's what I always tell my clients and my haters. Run the numbers. Velocity banking, that snowball, that avalanche. Run the numbers. Velocity banking is going to win. Win nearly every time. Nearly every time. Right? The only time debt snowball, I think, is in alignment with velocity banking is at the very beginning stages. If I don't have a line of credit, if I don't have a debt tool, it's a great concept. I don't wanna stay there though. I wanna learn how to leverage, create capital, create wealth. Have a wonderful day, God bless.